Um, I've been trying to wrap my hands around what's going on in Washington. And the only way I can do is try to bring it to my terms. And right now, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And we have the TARP funds. I see that as a second mortgage on our country. And then we got the stimulus package as a third mortgage on our country. And now we're going to do a health plan that's going to be a fourth mortgage in our country. And, um, you know, cap and trade, a fifth one. We've got to make payments on these because we don't have the money to pay for them. That's right. Um, when, you, when I have a second mortgage and I have to pay for it, uh, when I stop paying on it, somebody comes back and calls the note back. Right. Can you tell me who's going to call our notes back if we can't pay them? One, and two, is what are the repercussions going to be if we don't pay our debt? Right. That's a really good question. I went over to I went over to the public debt bureau, of public debt, a few weeks ago to watch one of our treasury auctions, and it's a very small room, just a you know a fraction of the size of this room. A bunch of flat screen, you know, TV displays and laptop computers, people with headsets on, sipping coffee. And I watched this borrow $40 billion in about four minutes. We do this every day. And the, the legitimate question that's arising in Treasury right now is, what if an auction fails? What if, you know, nobody wants it, nobody buys it. What then happens is you reset the auction and you dramatically increase the yield. Meaning, I get, I'm getting a little technical here. What happens is, we're going to have to pay people a whole lot more to lend us their money. That change drives up our interest rates. And so this year, for example, half of the, the federal government's budget is borrowed money. Half of it we're borrowing. Now, part of that's because of you know ex extreme circumstances like the Great Recession we're in and other things. But it's a huge, actually the war is a small part of it. It's a huge, huge drain. The problem is, it's not as if we have some temporary problem and then it's going away. That wouldn't be as big of an issue. The problem is the fiscal direction trajectory we are on. We have enormous unfunded liabilities, which will require mountains of borrowing. 48% of our debt is purchased by foreign countries, number one, China, number two, Japan. And in order to get these companies, countries, or people to buy our debt, we're gonna to have to pay them more yield, more, more money to buy our bonds, which will drive up our interest rates. And what this will end up doing will be put pressure on the Federal Reserve to either monetize our debt, meaning print more money um, to pay our debts. That's an insidious and very dangerous idea. By the way, the Fed is doing that right now. Um, you know, they claim for other reasons. I think it was a real big mistake they made. And I think, did Bernanke get reappointed today? Did he? Yeah. I've been doing these things. And so, um, that, so, number one problem, it puts pressure on inflation. Number two problem, it raises interest rates. Number three problem, it gives you a huge confidence crash in our currency. And so the fear I have is it will reduce the store of the Ameri of value that the American dollar presents. And who gets hurt the most when the dollar drops? Yeah, you do, that's right. People living on fixed income, the middle class, people who have dollar-denominated assets. That is a huge problem, which is made worse by the amount of money at which we borrow or the new obligations the government commits to, which can sign us to future borrowing, which right now, the current level of borrowing is literally unsustainable. I mean, I don't even know if I want to tell you the numbers because you just won't believe me. I mean, the numbers about how bad our finances get when my three kids are my age are just literally unsustainable. So the sooner we change these programs and reform them to get our debt under control, the better off our currency, the better off our interest rates, the better off uh, inflation, but the more we add to the list of unfunded liabilities, new entitlements that aren't paid for like this one, the worse we get, the more we hasten the bankruptcy of this country. So, so, so when they call the note, who calls the note? Yeah. Well, there's different kinds of debt. There's not a lot of, we can call debt. We, there's some call debt that we can call, and we mean treasury can call it. That's not a lot of it. Most of the debt is a fixed maturity in it. And so what happens when a, when a, when a, a note or a bill or a, or a, or a bond, uh, those are three different things, when they uh, expire, what Treasury then does, if they're in a deficit situation, which we are, is they roll over a new note. They just roll it over. So, you know, one note or bill comes due, and notes are due constantly. They come due, and then you just vote another one just to 
to pay the guy. It's kind of a Ponzi scheme in a sense. So <laughs> your bond is coming That's comforting. And then I, the federal government, pay you your bond plus interest. And then in order to get the money to pay you your bond plus interest, I have to float another bond to somebody else to keep paying it. And I just keep rolling this debt over and over and over. And that's, that's the cycle we're in right now. So look, I know lots of people enjoy taking these comments. I would 